let me let me move on to something else in the baseball world that's frustrating me. I'm just going to complain all podcast. How about that? Fan graphs. Okay. I don't want to go after fan graphs. Fan graphs came out with updated war, defensive war metrics. Okay. For the years 2016 till 2021. So they have changed the way that they calculate war, fielding war, and uh, retroactively changed all of the war metrics for players across the board. Okay. Here's some examples. In an individual season, Nick Ahmed gained two war in 2018 from 1.7 to 3.7. Carlos Correa gained uh, 1.9 to a 3.5. Javi Baez gained 1.5 war. Over the course of these, some guys lost a bunch of war. Uh, Over the course of these times, Nick Ahmed gained six and a half war, went from being a 4.8 war player to 11.6. Javi gained 4.2, 17.8 war to a 22 war. Hey, think he could have used those war points when he was going through arbitration the last few years? How do you just go back, change the way things are measured, give guys war, take uh, take war away from guys, and now they have to go into arbitration next year or the year, or they didn't get to use those numbers, and now like that's how we're paying people, but it can just change on a whim. I don't like defensive metrics. I don't think they're there yet. I don't know how guys are being valued defensively when it changes left and right. So the change was they added like some statistic in the algorithm to fucking defense, you're saying? They changed the algorithm that measures defensive war or whatever the, however they measure defensive war, they went back retroactively, they changed it, they added weight different places. So like, so what it looks like is like really good, like good defensive shortstops really, really benefit benefited from it. Uh, some of the defensive shortstops that don't aren't considered like as good got crushed. Uh, some outfielders got crushed. Like, Question: Did yours go up or down? I think mine was pretty flat, honest. Oh. Okay. Not I was really. like, are you heated because yours went down? Be no, honest. No, no. I think mine was I think mine was pretty flat. But there are guys that were comps to me in like going through the arbitration system who did get crushed. And like I could have used them, you know, there could have been comps that would have lined up better on like the overall war stuff, you know, if those metrics had changed. And yeah. so like it's not yeah, I don't know. It's I how does it just change? How do you just go back in time and change it? That doesn't make sense to me. Like I don't like you said, like you can't just change a stat. Like and and think about this: when MLB was proposing all that stuff in the midst of the lockout and going through negotiations, they wanted a war-based model where guys instead of arbitration, guys got paid off war. Okay, so we're going to go to a war-based model that changes five years later, and you lose all your war points. Like, okay, so what if you paid me X in 2017? And then my war got updated and I was worth three more war than you paid me for. Are you going to pay me with interest for that? Like it just the fan graphs of war, like end all be all. Well, fan graphs and baseball reference are the two war that teams use. Uh, and wow. they're both fact when you go through arbitration, they're both on the sheet. Um, and you know, I just think like, it's also crazy that we let two websites decide like how guys get paid. Here's here's my plan. I'm gonna start a company. Ian, guess what? Your war is a hundred. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. I think this is a good idea. Can we do John Boy War, please? Yes. I, I think Jimmy's actually talked to some people about putting together like a J War or something. He's had some. I know he's had some meetings with some different people trying to figure it out. Because I know Trevor's talked about Ian. You've talked about defensive metrics. He talked about um, in his career. He went from being graded as a below average defender to an above average defender. And he said, all he did, right. He didn't, nothing changed except for he took one step closer to the line. Gave away less doubles. Because that allowed him, no balls got by him. Right. So he graded well there. And now the plays that he was making, moving further away from the line graded above average because he was moving further and his range suddenly improved. So that was, he like, I think he talked to someone. He did. In the twins organization. I don't know. He he talked to somebody who told him to do that. He set me up with that guy this off season. And I talked to him. But it's like what you – that's the thing. Like you get crushed as a third baseman or first baseman if balls get down the line, you give up extra base hits. 
but like you can't control where you're positioned. Like no. sometimes they have you moved off the line and stuff. Like it's nuts. I it's nuts. I get like counting like errors and like, you know, some plays guys make that others can't, like just the range, but like one down the line that's out of their reach, like I mean the coaches set you like the coaches set you up still where you're supposed to be, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have a card. That's what I mean. Like it's not like you're sitting like, ah, I think right here's the right place. Ah, shoot, he got one by me. That's, I mean, that's, I think, shows that the system has flaws. I mean, granted, this was Trevor obviously played a couple of years ago, so it's everything's changing as we see with fan graphs, but there hasn't been a solid defensive metric. This is, I believe, they changed uh, to outs above average, was their new component in war that allowed it to change. But it's, yeah, as you said, like it definitely, Didi Gregorius is a guy in New York, put up some really, really good seasons. He lost, I believe, six and a half war. Uh, defend because of these changes went from an 11 and a half war player to six and a half, something along those lines. I mean, that that, that felt extreme, and then those are the outliers, obviously. But you know, I have a question about arbitration, it's kind of a different direction. And the guys who are didn't have their hearing yet, or whenever that is, what were they getting paid now? They get paid whatever the loan the team's number and until then- the hearing. Until the hearing, then if there's if they win their decision, then they get paid the got it rest. Um, but the, yeah, the defensive war. The th- I always say this: the thing that blows my mind is when guys like the guys that pass the eye test that are good outfielders, good infielders, and they go from being like the second dude in the league in center field war to like the seventeenth the next year. Like that guy didn't just forget how to play center field. He, there's times when guys regress and like, but the bouncing all around the metric thing, it blows my mind. And it's so, so dependent on where you play in what ballpark you play in. Like Olsen and Chapman, awesome defenders, really, really good, but they always got a bump from catching foul balls in Oakland that nobody else had a chance to catch. Like you play outfield in Kansas city, or Arizona or Colorado, like there's a ton more ground to cover. You take away more balls in the gap that the computer thinks should be doubles. Like it's just, you don't have that opportunity when you're playing, you know, right field in Pittsburgh. I want to, I get so fired up about defensive war. I want to talk about something that's very important to me. Tops NFTs. That's what it is. It's top tops NFTs. No real warning from Tom on this. Exciting news out of the digital convertibles world. Collectibles, collectibles, the digital collectibles world. Tops just announced this morning that they'll be releasing the much anticipated 2022 Series 1 baseball NFT. This Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern, exclusively at topsnftsnfts.com. That's topsnfts.com. Tom, what do you got on this? Are you a big NFT tops guy? Tops, as you guys know, we were at the Tops Bunt House. Tops has been a big uh, partner with John Boy Media. Uh, and this is a brand new thing that they just launched. Uh, as you mentioned, Ian, Tops NFT, you know, you can create a free Tops NFT account in just four easy steps to make sure you're ready to go when they hit sales Thursday at 1 p.m. They got in uh, anticipated releases such as the Stars of MLB Chrome, Generation Now, Ulta Short Print, Team Cube 2.0. Special 1987 35th anniversary motion set. So a lot of cool stuff going on there. We hope you guys can check it out. I'd like to file a motion. Uh, Tom reads all our ads from now on. Well, Tom did a good job of reading the ad, but I want to know, Tom, are you an NFT guy? During this segment? Of course. (laughs) I could... I want to know how many people in the John Boy offices are firing up the NFT shop and building themselves a Tops collectible. Because I would love to see Jake's collection versus Jimmy's collection. Maybe Trevor's got a collection over there in California. Trevor definitely feels like an NFT guy. I don't. I have to. I'll have to take a poll tomorrow and get back to you. Maybe we put that up on the compound Twitter. What what the feeling in the office is. I do know. Again, this is a slightly different from the Tops Bunt app. They had everyone, they were giving us free packs and stuff to open on the Arizona trip. And people were really getting competitive with those. Someone pulled like a gold Jeter or a diamond, whatever the best version of Jeter was. And people were losing their minds at the top bunt house at like 8 a.m. one morning. So I'll buy that for $1 million. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. If, I, if uh, it's Jeter, I'll pay a billion dollars. I, I would like. I would like a little inner office uh, NFT tops collection competition, and then I'm going to win it. 
We'll, we'll set that up. What you got? I want your NFT. I had some new tops cards that are sick. You know what I need? Shit. I'm dead serious. This is going to sound weird. I need a card from you. Put it in my wallet because in my wallet still, I still got Nico Horner, Tennessee Smokies card in my wallet. In my locker, for some reason, it's been in my locker since the alt site. I have a signed card from Adbert Alzelay. I've put it in my baseball bag everywhere I went, and I just always have it in my locker. I don't know why. Why don't you have one you for got me? one for you, Dakota. Uh, you've never given me one, Hap. Zach, that one's sick. I want it. That's an did awesome Adbert, card. Right. Did Adbert hand you a card? It was when we were at the alt site. It was a weird time. There's only 11 of us there. You know, it was a crazy place. It was mayhem there. Tops doesn't even ask me to sign cards anymore. You know what? I might be down on Tops. You know what? No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not down help. on Tops. I'm not down on Tops. Gonna I can't have wait to, to get cut that. NFT We're going to have to cut that, Tom, because we NFTs. just read that for Tops. <laughs> NFTs and Tops. No, he came tops. back. I can say it. He had a moment of clarity. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. I love I Tops. Love They're tops. great. I love Tops. They work with the PA. They're a big PA supporter. I signed yeah. some stuff for Tops. It's They're owned by Fanatics place. now, I think. Zach, how many cards did they give you to sign? Just, bro. Did you see the picture I sent you? I don't know if I sent it to you. Oh, that's fucked up. And I know I'm at the Shit, top of your list because we have a streak of almost 2,000 days. So I know you looked at my name and said, nah, I don't want to sign it to him. No. Sorry, go ahead. It's usually they only send like two grand to sign like max. And I get there. At my Just for people at home that think that's a lot, that's actually not that much. 2,000 like to sign actually You're saying 2,000 cards or $2,000? No, no, cards. 2,000 cards. Because when you say two grand, it makes it sound like dollars. No, sorry. 2,000 cards. And then the, my uh, lady from my agency texted me. goes, hey, like Tops wants you to sign or they have like uh, requested like 6,000 more signatures. I'm like, oh, cool. Like I'm assuming it's going to be like over a, a period of time. So I go up to my locker like a few days later and it's just like box, box, box. And I like feel them. I was like, oh, this is cool. And I feel them like, oh my God, it's going to take me a whole year. And bro, no, you have like a deadline on it. I do. That's why I've never taken them on the road before. And I just took two huge sleeves and I'm like, bro, I have to do this. Yeah. I did them this off season. My hand was literally cramped. I'd sit down and pop out like 500 a night. How long does it take you guys? Like what's like, what, how many can you do in one hour? You it could depends, pack them out like, pretty you quick. To, you have to let them dry though. And then, I mean, I don't like stacking them on top of each other. So you kind of have to like set a space. And then when that space is taken care of, you stack them up. I put them away. Then I'll take another stack and do it. it but it takes some dedicated time to really, you have to have, you have to have a nice, comfortable seat. You have to really have a good process going. Two cards get stuck together. You're really upset. You I only do it. Going. I only do it when there's like a game on TV and I can just watch the game and then just like mine, like just keep signing. So, Nico was really good at it in Arizona, and I took his strategy is I'll just put somebody's YouTube up, and I'll just, like, watch, you know, Miggy's highlights from his torture. Oh, oh, my God. As you I'm guys signing. would do that. Both and of you is that, would do that the biggest, Zach and Nick, I That right there is the epitome of you two, and that's your problem. <laughs> you guys are dorks. Freaking dorks. Dorks. Just watch this, like, because like, uh, I mean, it, it's not, I don't mean that in like an actual, oh, I want, hey, they hey, just hey, love hey. it, but I'm like, Zach, it's of course, like, oh, I just love watching his swing, man. It's I'll, watch, swing. I'll watch golf, I'll watch basketball. No, no man, no, what no, a swing, no. man. You You're not watch watching golf. Highlights? You're lying. You're going, he's going back and watching 2004 Derek Jeter fielding highlights, watching him throw balls across the infield. For the audio listeners, Zach has put on a pair of sunglasses, even though he's sitting inside, just so you're aware. Bright Tom, it's freaking bright, man. He's a dork. Jeez, that's so perfect though that that's what you would do. I know. What They're else am I gonna do? You can't you can't multitask. They're I mean, probably you put a game on at eight in the morning when I wake up. Well, don't do it in the morning. Do them at night. I I don't like staying up that late. Cap. That's I stay up late. You cat, you're up till one probably. No, that's you get home at eleven forty five. You don't hang out in the locker room anymore? Only with Jim and Ducey? Let's continue. Let's move on. Yeah. Jeez. Can we uh, – anything else before the Sloan screen time? I mean, I kind of want to get to the Sloan screen time, but if you guys have anything else in the baseball world that you want to check in on, you want to talk about, Keegan Thompson's really, really good at baseball. <laughs> Scott like, Efros. Shout out. That's nasty still. Scotty Efros is nasty. The only runs he's given up this year were not legitimate because they were some soft hit balls. He's been real good. 
IH8 looks good. I rake. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for the shouts. Eh, he's eh. He's whatever. Zach's having Zach's having a heck of a run. Nice job, Zach. You're walking. You're slugging. Is there another Zach on here? Why do you hate yourself? I don't I hate myself. I looked up. I'm like top today. three in the league. Very good. Strikeouts. Who cares? Punching, hitting doubles. I am hitting doubles. That tell you what, if they play somebody down the third baseline, I am in trouble. You just gotta collect those counting stats early, and then the rest of the numbers even out over the course of the I did, season. I did, I did homer for my first time in 17 games yesterday. I homer for my first time yesterday too. Yeah, but you're not in the bus league, brother. Well, it was. I was happy to get my first one out of the way. You're in the private. You're in the private jet league. That's true. The show flight league. I'm in a show hotel right now too with the fellows. You're on the play TPC in Arizona league. Oh, I mean, on an off day. Atlanta. Get to the slow screen time. Shut up. We forgot Miggy's uh, three thousand hit. We should shout out Miggy. Oh, Zach, oh. that's your teammate, man. Don't you want to shout out your teammate? I mean, it is. It's just any time. I, w- I wish I was there. Yeah, but any time nice. he gets a hit. They just show a thing on the board, and it's like, and Miggy is now past Babe Ruth, and it's just like, what the fuck? Were you, were you like, when it happened, were you happy for Miggy, but then kind of like sneaky sad that you weren't there? Because that's like a really yeah. cool milestone. Yeah, because like, I, I was, I was, I was sad. For, yeah, I was there for five hundred, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, it was. It is cool though that Jason Foley, teammate of mine in college, was there for his three thousandth, and I was there for his five hundredth. That's really cool. I t- yeah. actually turned to Nico right when the game where he got it because we were watching it and I was like it stinks excellent there that would have been really cool yeah um thanks for reminding him yeah, yeah seriously, man. Freaking, I forgot he even got 3,000 these years yeah that's Tom's fault that's on Tom it was yeah. cool that uh Iglesias was there because they played together for a while I think boys. it's also cool I said this when he was, he was chasing 500 too so like still how much of a human he is and he said he wore sunglasses his first ab against the yankees when he had 2999 he said he wore sunglasses because he was emotional during it like he said he was swinging at everything he couldn't feel his legs and i'm like hey Maggie, you have done this close to three thousand times and you still can't act like you've done it almost three thousand times which is insane can i ask a question to dakota and uh, everyone else but mostly to dakota from a pitching point of view okay you're he's he's at 299. You're facing him. Are you trying to punch his ticket from yeah. str- from strike one? The game, they, the score of the game doesn't matter. Okay, score of the game doesn't matter. It's not like it's not close. Game's five runs either way. Are you giving him two heaters, heater heater over the middle to see what happens, or are you trying to punch his ticket? Cause cause if you give up that three thousand hit, you are. In the Hall of Fame, on the the video TV recording forever, forever. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like you don't want to give up hits ever, but like honestly, is it that bad? Like I don't know. You're on the replay. Like oh, this guy gave up a hit, but yeah, like but it's me. Like that's pretty cool. Oh, we didn't we didn't talk about the Yankees walking him. You had that to. was I was I was that yes say okay. But Dakota, can you ask that question? Yes, I oh, I think it'd be really cool to forever be on that highlight, but at the same time, you're not like like I'm trying to strike him out. Like you're never going up there being like, ah, if he gets a hit, he gets a hit. Like you're you're trying to win the game. Scotty like, said the same thing. Scotty said he was trying to punch his ticket, and I 100%. said, I said, I don't you're know. You're competitive. Like you got to be a competitor. You're I'm not trying to get him closer to three thousand punch outs. Yeah, hundred percent. But it'd be it, I wouldn't be that pissed off to be like the one on the video clip, like especially if it's just a single. Yeah, like it was just a single. One it's not a, a binky. Homer, like, it's not Fuck. a binky. It's not like a walk off binky or anything. It's just a nice like fourth inning single, no big deal. Then you get the next guy rolling it up. I mean, play. you're still not giving it to him. Like, no way. Yeah, it's not a big situation. No, All right. I'm still trying I'm to strike saying, him out. Pretty cool to be I'm in the 100% Hall of Fame trying something. to strike him out. Uh, let's do the slow screen time. Yeah, couldn't believe the Yankees walked him. Actually, it was like I can, but like I think honest, it, was cool. it, was, it was the right, it was the right, yeah, decision. It was the right thing to do. It was the but, right thing to do, but the baseball gods immediately repaid it because that was such a with a flare easy single from yep. Meadows. Yeah. What about what about uh, what about Joe walking the guy with the bases loaded, Corey Seager? Did, did you see Trout in the outfield? He was just like, 
Yeah, he was a little confused. He He's is. getting they this. Won that game. They won that game. And they did worked. win the game. They did, but that didn't. That play didn't work out for him. But they won the game. Do you know that every time that a team's intentionally walked somebody, they have won the game? Like it's like they're like six I saw that. all time, whatever, or whatever, however many times it's happened, they've won every single time. So, just okay. uh, just so you guys know, this is Sloan Screen Time brought to you by Sloan Sloan Flushers all over the place. If you need to wash your hands without touching the faucet, you need some automatic flushers in your life. Everyone Sloan's needs a people that. to call. You automatic need, faucets, still automatic flushers. Huh? I said I still have not used the bathroom in the clubhouse. He won't use the bathroom if it's not a Sloan flusher, which I respect. I yep. believe it. That's just respecting the company. I just gained another yep. minute. Uh, three fifty-five. If you, if anybody's at three fifty-four, I will argue this. He golfed all day, so he's cheating. Yeah, I'm actually not going to say mine today because I had to take my girlfriend to the airport early in the morning and we traveled, so I'm actually not going to say mine. 632. Wow. What is this? He, he has to say it. It's six miles He's going to say it, Tom. Tom, He's Tom, say Tom it. would you fucking relax from the submarine? <laughs> I hope everyone right. that's I hope everyone that's listening can at least go see a clip of Zach the way he looks right now. He's got the John Boy hat on. His quarter zip is zipped up to his throat. And he's got the glasses on. It's a crazy look. Yep. Crazy look. Tom, what's your number? 620. It's not bad. You're three hours ahead of me, too. Zach, are you, you're not over seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely is. Definitely is. He you're not over eight. No, but I'm flirting with it. What is 754. It? 756. Oof. Hey, travel day, and I had to use the GPS. Give me a break. Did oh, you watch God. the Batman on the plane? Uh, No, because it was a shorter flight. I watched a create a different one. It was about the Boeing documentary. Did you guys hear about this? No, but I just saw the Batman. The Batman was pretty good. Although I'm not hang, hang, watch, hang, 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 hang. Spoil it for Zach. Doc- Spoil it for Zach. Tell him everything. I just I don't know if I fuck with emo Batman. This is my thoughts. I don't know. Right, well, we're not Madison, gonna do we're not gonna talk about it. That's we're it. Not talking about it. Hey Tom, submarine. Okay, we're not talking about it. You know Tom, he's we'll emo. Have you seen any of the trailers? He's emo. That's like in the it's in the trailers. You know that. That's we'll talk about it more next week once Zach's watched it. Zach, are you saying you watch a documentary about planes and messed up planes while you were on a plane? Yeah, that's psychotic. That's crazy. I, I know. But it was it's wild, like, dude. Man, you're a psychopath. Wild. What's wrong with you? What are you rooting for it to happen or something? You're nuts. No, I'm just mentally strong. All right. <laughs> that's episode 107 of the Compound Podcast. Everybody check out the YouTube if you're listening so you can see Zach's crazy look right now. We'll see you next week for episode 108, Fucking presented by Parse Rum. I love Parse, you love Parse. When I say Parse, you say Rum. 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 Parse. Rum. 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 Sorry. One, two, two. Have a good week.